Hello and welcome to the 2020 commencement experience. Before we begin today, we wish to acknowledge that portions of our commencement presentation were recorded before the unfortunate death of George Floyd that sparked protests and a national debate on race in America. While we celebrate the collective achievements of our students, we must recognize the state of the world that our graduates will emerge into as hopeful change agents. Let us take a moment of silence to recognize the current world of events catalyzed by the two pandemics we as a nation are enduring, COVID-19 and the institutionalized racism that threatens the well-being of persons of color, particularly the black community. Let's pause for a moment. Thank you. Mahatma Gandhi said, be the change you want to see in the world. Dr. Martin Luther King justly stated, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. So as you graduate and move forward, I implore you to be leaders of change in creating a better tomorrow. Exercise your right to vote and use your voice to speak up to bring about change. And now let's go to our commencement experience exercise. Thank you. so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we washed were so gallantly streaming and the rocket red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the Mr. President, esteemed graduates and family and friends from around the world, the hour is at hand. The guests are assembled. It's time to begin our virtual commencement experience. To get us started, it's my pleasure to introduce Baruch's own a cappella group, the Blue Notes. Three, two, one. Standing high above the city's mighty roar, Bernard Baruch, we sing to you now and evermore, praising you for years. We will always be proud to call you our mama. Bernard Baruch, we sing to you forever. 
Congratulations, Woo! class of 2020. 2020. Congrats, class You guys got this. The power is in your hands. Thank you, Blue Notes. We appreciate your being part of this amazing experience. Graduates, today is your day. It's the culmination of everything you've worked so hard for, and it is your gateway to the future. Baruch College is proud to be a most distinguished institution within the City University of New York. At any given time, there are more than a quarter of a million students pursuing degrees at CUNY colleges. Within this amazing system, Baruch has earned a national reputation as an engine for the economic and social mobility of its students. A Baruch education literally transforms lives. Hello, and thank you to your president, to your faculty, and to the entire campus community for inviting me for this celebration. I am thrilled to extend my enthusiastic congratulations to a very special group of graduates, the resilient and persevering class of 2020. Please make some noise. I want to hear you. That's better. Thank you. And thank you, President Waterstein. With your approaching retirement, I want to first congratulate and thank you, my dear friend, for your extraordinary leadership of Baruch this past 10 years. I'm honored to help you celebrate the last graduating class of your fantastic tenure. I'm also happy to welcome Dr. David Wu, who will succeed you as president over the summer. And on behalf of the entire CUNY community, I am thrilled to extend my enthusiastic congratulations to a very special group of graduates. The outstanding Baruch College Class of 2020 Give yourselves a big round of applause. You have to do better, I wanna hear you. That's more like it, thank you. Like all of you, I wish we could be celebrating your wonderful achievement together, in person, in a grand setting, with all the pomp and circumstance that I know you and your families have looked forward to. For now, though, I'm grateful for this virtual gathering and honored to be part of it. This celebration might be virtual, but the milestone it signifies is very, very real. Even without a procession in caps and gowns, nothing can diminish the power of this moment in your lives and nothing should dampen the pride you feel in getting here. Quite the opposite, I know what it took. I know how you had to rise to the occasion to arrive at this very special moment of your life. It goes without saying what an extraordinarily difficult time it's been in New York and on all of our CUNY campuses as we struggle to complete the academic year amid almost inconceivable disruption, uncertainty, and anguish. As a community, we have been impacted considerably. For many of us, the crisis has been accompanied by personal loss. On behalf of the entire university, I want to offer sincere condolences to all who are grieving here today. We all have experienced the challenges in our own personal ways, but we have responded collectively. And no more so than you, the class of 2020. You have demonstrated a resilience and resolve that inspires me. You stay strong and adapted to the circumstances. Midway through your final semester, you made a transition to distance learning. Your time on campus ended abruptly and unexpectedly, but you pulled together, helped each other, made sacrifices for the greater good. I am incredibly proud of you, and despite the uncertain times ahead, I am as optimistic and excited as ever about the futures you will ultimately create for yourselves. I send my heartfelt congratulations to you and to your families who share in your accomplishments and also to the entire campus community who celebrates today. Take a moment to reflect and to appreciate all that you have done to reach this day. Yes, we have much ahead to overcome, but stay strong, look forward, and know that you have what it takes and more 
to thrive. Class of 2020, remember that you're not alone and that CUNY and this chancellor will always have you back. Congratulations. Muchas, muchas felicidades. Today is also a milestone for Baruch's president, Mitchell Wallerstein, who is stepping down after leading the college through a period of historic growth and improvement. Since arriving at Baruch 10 years ago, Dr. Wallerstein has worked to modernize and expand our campus facilities, recruit top faculty in all areas, and launch and enhance academic programs. During his tenure, the college has also greatly expanded our student support offerings, including scholarships, career coaching, internship and job placement services, opportunities to study abroad, and more. The success of these efforts is evident in your success. Our students who are deeply involved with campus life and students who go on to have successful careers and lives. I am now pleased to introduce President Wallerstein. Good morning. Let me begin by thanking Chancellor Matos Rodriguez for taking the time to send his greetings to all of our graduating students and their families. The Chancellor and I have been friends and colleagues for almost a decade, and I greatly admire the wise and energetic way that he is leading this university and providing leadership in this crisis. I am fully confident that under his guidance, CUNY will emerge even stronger when the pandemic is over. Thank you, Phelo. I'm now delighted to convey my greetings and congratulations to the class of 2020 and to our graduate students. Today is an important milestone for all of us. It marks the end of your journey as students at Baruch College, while for me, it marks the completion of my final semester as president of this great institution. When we all convened for the spring semester back in late January, none of us could have possibly imagined that we would be in the middle of a pandemic by the middle of March with the rapid spread of the COVID-19 pandemic virus, or that we would wind up celebrating graduation in this virtual fashion, rather than together in the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. I am grateful that Baruch has such creative students, faculty, and staff, and I particularly want to thank the many members of the Baruch staff who have worked tirelessly from home to make this virtual event possible. Virtual or not, this ceremony marks the end of an important chapter of your lives. But as the word commencement suggests, the day is really about beginnings, the start of the next chapter. It is a moment to celebrate what you have achieved through a lot of hard work and sacrifice, but it is also a moment to look ahead to what's coming next. Hopefully a new and better future for you and your families and for the world at large. If the events of the past few months have taught us anything, it is that we can never really be sure what is coming at us. And we need to be well-educated and well-prepared to respond and to succeed in whatever circumstances we find ourselves in. As a nation and as a planet, we are confronting complex and far-reaching challenges. Sound science, tells us that the COVID-19 virus will be with us for the foreseeable future until a vaccine is finally developed and widely available. As we all know, the death toll, especially here in New York City, has been simply staggering. And I would like to take a moment to express my deepest condolences to all who have lost a loved one, a family member, or a friend to this terrible disease. The incredibly rapid spread of the COVID-19 virus has exposed glaring inequities that have long existed in our society. Inequities across healthcare, technology, adequate housing, nutritious food, and a financial safety net. We have long faced growing socioeconomic inequality, deteriorating physical infrastructure, 
and the looming threat of a global climatic change. But it is now painfully clear that these enormous challenges can only be addressed through global cooperation and engagement. Such collaboration has always been and will remain the cornerstone of scientific advance, international trade, and business at all levels. As graduates of, of a college that celebrates and builds upon its status as one of the most diverse institutions of higher education in the world, you are well positioned to take a leadership role in bringing about a healthier, more equitable, and sustainable future. The world desperately needs your ideas, your energy, your ethics, and your commitment to change. Some of you may have seen former Barack Obama's nationally televised commencement speech in late May. He had some wise words for the graduates, some of which I would like to share with you now. President Obama urged the graduates to, quote, build a community, unquote. He noted that, quote, no one does big things by themselves. Right now, when people are scared, it's easy to be cynical and to say, let's just look out for myself or my friends or my family or the people who think and pray like me. But if we're going to get through these difficult times, if we're going to create a world where everybody has an opportunity to find a job, to afford to go to college, and if we're going to save the environment and defeat future pandemics, then we're going to have to do it together, unquote. He went on to urge the graduates to, quote, be alive to one another's struggles, stand up for one another's rights, leave behind all the old ways of thinking that divide us, sexism, racial prejudice, status, and greed, and set the world on a different path, unquote. In these challenging times, this advice strikes me as an excellent set of principles to chart your own next steps. I think it is particularly auspicious that your graduation year coincides with what is arguably the most important national election in recent memory. As the pandemic has made all too clear, we have deep societal problems that urgently need to be addressed. So the question is whether we will choose candidates at every level of government who are willing to take to think boldly and confront the challenges that our country faces while also remaining engaged with the world. In order to survive, our democracy needs smart, hardworking people like you, people who are capable of communicating with others who may not necessarily share the same political views, to find solutions for difficult societal and planetary problems, and to bring about change in local, state, and national policies. It is critically important in this regard that your generation voices its concerns regarding decisions and policies that you believe are taking our city, our state, or our country in the wrong direction. And most important, it is essential that you and everyone you know comes out to vote in November. The urgency of all this has never been greater. During your time at Baruch, and especially over the past few months, you have shown that you have the intelligence the talent, the flexibility, and the grit to do anything that you set your mind to, even under the most adverse circumstances. The faculty and staff of the college are proud of you and what you've accomplished. I am proud of you, and you have every reason to be proud of yourself. But as you celebrate your own achievements, it is also important to acknowledge that you most likely did not reach these, this graduation day entirely on your own. So it was appropriate to recognize the people who helped you along the way, your parents, friends, colleagues, spouses, partners, siblings, children, and others who believed in you, who cheered you on, who helped you through difficulties, and who supported you in many different ways. They were companions on your academic journey, and today is their day as well. So I hope you are watching this virtual ceremony with some of these people, but if not, please be sure to thank them and to express your gratitude for all they did to help you. Like all the graduates today, I too am beginning a new chapter. I have just completed my 10th year as president of the college and I am preparing to step down. 
Baruch's great new president, Dr. David Wu, will arrive to take the helm on the 1st of July. After a brief research leave during the summer, I am looking forward to returning in the fall semester to continue my association with Baruch College as a CUNY University professor. I will be teaching graduate courses in the Mark School of Public and International Affairs in my specialty areas of international security and international affairs. And in this new role, I look forward to helping advance the careers of future Baruch students. Finally, as you make your way in the world in the coming years, I hope that you will stay connected with your alma mater and that you will help pay it forward for the generation of students who will follow you. I remind you that many of the programs and opportunities that you benefited from during your time at Baruch were made possible by the generous alumni who preceded you and who contributed to the college both financially and through their generous sharing of their time. I urge you all to carry on this wonderful tradition because it is what makes Baruch special within the City University of New York. With that, I offer my hearty congratulations and best wishes. You are the, at the start of an incredible journey. Make the most of it. It is now my honor to recognize two outstanding students from among the class of 2020. This year's valedictorian and salutatorian. Both are Macaulay Honors College students and they each have excelled academically and have had strong community engagement around the college. Catherine Dorovitsen has been named salutatorian. She has earned a BBA in finance from the Zicklin School, along with minors in New York City studies and international business. Catherine has had many leadership and mentorship roles at Baruch, including with the Star Career Development Center, and she twice studied abroad in Germany. My congratulations to you, Catherine. This year's valedictorian, who will address the class of 2020 in just a moment, is Anne-Marie Gaidosh. She earned a BBA in Computer Information Systems from the Zicklin School, with a concentration in Management of Musical Enterprises and minors in Business Law and New York City Studies. Anne-Marie held numerous leadership roles on campus, including Chair of graphics for the undergraduate student government, president of the pre-law society, vice president of incoming global bond volunteers, and vice president for marketing for ASEC Baruch. A truly global citizen, Anne-Marie studied in Nanjing, China, and volunteered abroad extensively, is serving in the Galapagos Islands, Israel, Thailand, Sri Lanka, and the Republic of Georgia. Among numerous accolades, Anne-Marie received a 2019 New York City Mayoral Service Award for more than 1,000 hours of service and was interviewed on ABC's uh, Tiempo for her volunteer efforts in Puerto Rico after Hurricane Maria. Anne-Marie, your classmates and I are most eager to hear what you have to say. Good morning, class of 2020 administrators, families, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Anne-Marie Gaidosh, and I am honored to have been chosen as this year's valedictorian. My Baruch story begins with a room, an ordinary room at first glance, but a very special room nonetheless. It looked just like any other club room in Baruch's club suite, but for me, it became my home for the next four years, and the countless people who walked through its doors shaped me into the woman I am today. I will never forget my first day of classes at Baruch College. I spent 30 minutes in a traffic jam, and I'm not talking about the traffic that I encountered on my two hour commute from Staten Island that morning. Rather, it was the afternoon rush on the second floor in the vertical campus. The school was alive with the sound of eager students catching up with their friends. It took me some time to see through the crowd and find my destination. But finally, I saw it. Room 3228, the club room where Isaac Baruch, a UN-partnered international service organization, was hosting its first general interest meeting of the semester. It was here that I, 
an Eastern Orthodox, Carpathian Russian, Slovak American, found myself engaging in conversations with Dominican musicians, Pakistani entrepreneurs, and Haitian public service advocates. Long conversations turned into late nights in that very room. My peers and I talked about our cultures and our dreams. I learned about what it was like to grow up as a Mexican-American woman living in Flatbush, and what it was like to immigrate from Zimbabwe, balancing the stress of applying for permanent residency while attending school as a full-time student. Each new story instilled in me a deeper sense of pride for my school and a deeper sense of community with my peers. I always thought of myself as a true New Yorker, but I didn't truly understand New York until I came to Baruch College, a home for students from over 160 countries. The halls of Baruch remind me of the streets of New York City. Although the school's sheer size might seem daunting to an outsider, the students within are resilient. We are bold and determined, willing to spend countless nights studying in the Newman Library, sacrificing our sanity just to get that A. We are crafty, subsisting on dollar pizza and halal during the 25 minute breaks in our schedule. We walk with purpose, running to squeeze ourselves into an elevator that appears to be filled to the brink just to make it to class on time. But most importantly, we are living diversity. Students who have been lucky enough to interact with students from around the globe each and every day. You, class of 2020, inspired me to learn more about the world that we live in, taking my academics abroad. My first stop, Israel. On Shabbat, we visited the Western Wall, the most sacred Jewish site in the world. As a non-Jewish student on a trip organized by Baruch Hallel, I was afraid that I would embarrass myself. Instead, I was embraced by the local community, spending the night dancing with Jewish Israelis under the light of a glowing full moon. Cultural interactions like this catapulted me into a frenzy of international exploration, a vital component of the global education that Baruch encourages its students to pursue. I climbed the Great Wall of China, walked along the equator in Ecuador, and celebrated Poyo Day in Sri Lanka. With each new country, I learned more about myself and more about the professional course I wanted to chart. But nothing excited me more than being able to come back to room 3228 and share my experiences with my fellow Bearcats. My mother, a proud Baruch alumna, used to tell me, Anne Marie, when you get to college, you'll meet people who change your life forever. As is typical of mothers, she was correct. Never before did I think that I would find a home in room 3228, where I was constantly surrounded by deep thinking, optimistic Baruch students. Never before did I think that I would find myself in Thailand, volunteering with an anti-human trafficking project and spending time teaching Thai, Burmese, and Shan students. Never before did I think that I would be delivering this speech to all of you, and certainly not from the comfort of my own bedroom. The past few months have been difficult for all of us. The world is changing in unprecedented ways. But when were the last four or so years ever easy? We've conquered MTA mishaps, a stressful registration process, water outages, and now an international pandemic. It's challenging to move forward when our time at Baruch was cut short by forces outside of our control. But this is our ultimate test, class of 2020. Above all else, Baruch has prepared us for the world out there, an interconnected world where unity makes us stronger, a world where we have the power to initiate legitimate reform for the members of our diverse communities. College has taught us that when we stand together, we can amplify the voices of our marginalized peers. The task before us is formidable. Nevertheless, we have the ability to rewrite our country's narrative, ensuring that equality is more than just an abstract concept, but instead a human right for all. When times get tough, I want you to think about your special place at Baruch, your personal room 3228. Is it one of the club rooms where you're first introduced to your best friends? 
Is it the library, where you spend all night goofing around with your classmates? Or is it the gym, where you played basketball with your peers to let off some steam? Wherever it is, I want you to think of this place right now and what made it so special to you. Remember the memories you created there and the Bearcats who shared them with you. These are the moments that nobody can ever take away. But don't let my anecdotes fool you. I don't know how to summarize my undergraduate career at Baruch College, let alone how to summarize the experiences of all of our amazing graduates. I might be graduating with a BBA in Computer Information Systems, but I am more than a business student. I am your peer, and because of you, I now consider myself a student of the world. I cannot thank enough my family, the frequent visitors of room 3228, Baruch staff and professors, and all of you, the class of 2020, for helping me get here. We are now ready to take on the world, fearlessly and unapologetically, in a way that no pandemic can suppress. I want you to remember that this is a speech about us, the class of 2020. We did not get here alone, nor will we continue along our individual professional routes in solitude. We are one world, one city, one school, and most importantly, one community. We are Baruch's class of 2020, and we, more than anything, deserve to take pride in who we are today. Once again, congratulations, class of 2020. We did it. We made history, and we did it together. Thank you so much for having me. Now it's time for today's main event, the conferral of 5,000 357 bachelor's and master's degrees awarded by Baruch College of the City University of New York. I also want to acknowledge that Baruch is awarding six doctoral degrees this year to students who completed their coursework and dissertations in industrial organizational psychology or business under the supervision of Baruch College faculty. Following academic custom, I now turn the proceedings over to the deans of the schools from which you will receive your degrees. David Birdsell, Marks Dean of the Austin W. Marks School of Public and International Affairs, Aldemara Romero, Dean of the George and Mildred Weissman School of Arts and Sciences, and Fenwick Huss, Willem Koiker, Dean of the Zicklin School of Business. Mr. President, on behalf of the faculty of the Austin W. Marks School of Public and International Affairs, it is my pleasure to present you with 285 of the most visionary, compassionate candidates for Master of International Affairs, Master of Public Administration, Executive Master of Public Administration, and Master of Science in Education in Higher Education Administration. I also present 47 candidates for the Bachelor of Science degree in the Marx School of Public and International Affairs. Together, these Marx graduates represent the future of our governments at every level, our nonprofit organizations, and the communities that they serve. Knowing their talents, we have every reason to be optimistic. Mr. President, I respectfully request that you grant the degrees earned. Mr. President, on behalf of the faculty of the George and Mildred Weissman School of Arts and Sciences, I am pleased to present to you 149 of the most creative and dedicated candidates for the Master of Arts, Masters of Science, Master of Arts in Arts Administration, Masters of Arts in Corporate Communication, Master of Arts in Mental Health Counseling, Master of Science in Financial Engineering, and Master of Science in Industrial Organizational Psychology degrees. I am also honored to present to you 1,062 candidates for the Bachelor of Arts and Science degrees in the Weizmann School of Arts and Sciences. They have pursued a traditional liberal arts curriculum while taking advantage of the professional training available to them. And as a result, they are ready for anything. I respectfully ask that you award all of the Weizmann candidates the degree earned. Mr. President, on behalf of the Zicklin School of Business, it is my honor to present the candidates for the Master of Business Administration, Executive Master of Business Administration, 
Executive MBA in Healthcare Management, Master of Science, Executive Master of Science, and the Executive Master of Science in Industrial and Labor Relations. The 865 candidates are astute and ethical professionals poised for leadership positions. I am also pleased to present 2,930 talented and ambitious candidates for the Bachelor of Business Administration degree. I respectfully request that you award the degrees to the Zicklin School of Business candidates that they have earned. I now ask all candidates from all schools to get your cameras ready and rise for the conferral of your degrees. Snap a selfie, grab a quick video, share it with your family, friends, and the rest of the Baruch community at the hashtag listed on the screen. Candidates, if you're ready, with the authority granted by the Charter of the State of New York to the Board of Trustees, and therefore delegated by the board to me this day, I hereby confer upon you the degree for which you, which you have worked so hard with all of the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto. In accord with an honored tradition, I now ask all the graduates to move the tassel from the right side of your mortarboard to the left. Congratulations. <laughs>